Tape 1. After North Shore research was shut down in 2001, an extensive audit of its files and research was performed. The following is a series of documents, videos, and pictures centered on the St. Roche Quarantine of 1998. Despite hundreds dying, history considers the quarantine a huge success. The supposed efforts of North Shore research eradicated the itch and saved many lives. Their role in the quarantine and developing a cure led to their premier status in the southeast Louisiana community. Unfortunately, it seems North Shore research enjoyed a reputation it didn't deserve. St. Roche Quarantine File 1 The alert was first issued on January 10th, 1998, at 8.15pm on all channels in southeast Louisiana three hours after state and local officials became aware of the Omega Helminthus. It was broadcasted at the top of every hour for all 28 days of the quarantine. It is important to note that at this point, details on the Omega Helminthus were few. Many still believed that the illness was a fungus or virus. Regional Alert Primary Entry Point System issued an emergency alert notification. This is not a test. Repeat, this is not a test. Primary Entry System issued an emergency action notification for the town of St. Roche and the surrounding communities. Effective immediately, exits 47, 48, 49, 50, and 51 off Interstate 12 will be blocked off. In addition, Highway 22 will be blocked off at the Tangipahoa Parish and City of Seidel borders due to a mandatory quarantine. Check with your local governments for alternative routes. Stay tuned to your local news outlet for more information. For more information, please continue to file 2. Holy shit! It appears that a novel disease has arisen in the St. Roche area. This disease was evidently destructive and infectious enough to warrant a quarantine. So St. Roche and the surrounding areas were subsequently quarantined and blocked off from all travel access. Oh, good thing they blocked off the Tangy Parish. We wouldn't want the brain worms to get sick. From the title card image, it also seems like it causes people to grow lots of new holes all over their skin. And I think that's pretty neat. This disease was named Omega Helminthus, which I'm assuming I'm mispronouncing, so we're gonna go with the itch. Other than a new law that I'm going to immediately ignore, let's see what other ramifications this disease had on the next tape. Tape 2, St. Roche Quarantine File 2. Dr. Christopher Wells, General Practitioner, North Shore Doctors. January 5th, 1998. Patient, Scott Griffin. Appointment, 1 p.m. Date of birth, 4-1-58. Reason for visit. Possible allergic reaction. Patient is an undersea diver for the North Shore Research's Deep Sea Project. They are stationed on multiple oil rigs off the coast of Louisiana. It is a partnership program between the oil industry and the research facility, created in hopes of discovering new aquatic creatures. Patient claimed that during a routine expedition, they discovered what they thought was a new species. The unnamed specimen was harvested and brought on board to be studied. When unloading the specimen, he claimed that a white discharge from the animal touched his right forearm. Shortly after returning to shore, a cluster of hives appeared on his arm. By the time he arrived at my office, the patient was covered in hives. The patient has no known allergies. He should have gone to the hospital and was very lucky not to develop anaphylaxis. The patient received two milliliters of epinephrine and after 30 minutes, the hives receded. After an additional hour of observation, he was sent home. January 6th, 1998. Patient, Scott Griffin follow-up. At 8 a.m., my nurse followed up with Mr. Griffin. Overnight, the patient's hives had returned and developed into large cysts. Upon getting this information, I asked the patient to immediately return for a follow-up. Mr. Griffin's wife, Suzanne, called at 11, stating that the patient got extremely ill on his way to the follow-up appointment. They pulled over to the St. Roche gas station. On the way to the bathroom, his cysts popped. The patient got extremely agitated and demanded to be returned home. The nurse has made repeated calls, but there has been no answer. I will stop by his home after work. Final follow-up. What I found was horrifying. I had discovered the patient had murdered his entire family so he could soak in their blood. All the cysts on his body appeared to have opened. He was covered in hundreds of holes. When I asked what he had done, he would only reply, they won't let me kill myself. I called the police immediately. I personally had never seen an allergic reaction as intense as this one, which leads me to believe this is something more serious. Everyone he came in contact with needs to be examined and placed under quarantine. Additional information on Dr. Christopher Wells' role in the St. Roche quarantine can be found in subsequent files. This disease is being characterized as an allergic reaction to a novel substance. The source was apparently from some sort of deep sea creature. 
If he thinks he found a new species, he sure as hell got that right. Because I don't know what kind of sea cum makes you grow a bunch of tiny new little vaginas all over your skin. I know the second they said milky white discharge, y'all were like, as fuck's gonna say cum. For the last time, stop touching every white discharge that comes out of every slimy wet hole. I told you you were gonna get a disease, and look at what happened. It appears that after an initial epinephrine injection, the reaction subsided. But it didn't stay that way for long. Evidently, this wasn't any sort of regular allergic reaction. The patient's hives developed into large cysts, and one of them burst, likely infected. Susan. But don't worry, as you remember from the tape, that problem's kind of about to solve itself. After demanding to be brought home, Mr. Griffin, no relation, murder-sturbated his entire family and drained their bodies in a tub, soaking in it, before trauma-dumping all over Mr. Wells. Well, that's a mess and a half. Just get the dog to lick the shattered remains of what was once your family off the ground. I'm telling you, those little goobers are like living vacuum cleaners. Anyways, with this tape, we get some new information. That being, why the St. Roche authorities felt the need to quarantine the entire county. That being, that it's a rash that makes you fucking murder people and soak in their blood, so a quarantine is only slightly an overreaction. It appears that this disease has anomalous capacities that allow it to affect the host's behavior in extreme and violent ways. Either that, or Scott just really hated his family, and the thing to push him over the edge was just an especially itchy rash. But I don't think so. He attempted to Kermit sewer slide, apparently, so I, he probably didn't want to turn the love of his life and his beautiful children into tomato soup. If there are answers to be found here, I'd be willing to bet they're on the next tape. Which, well, I, I'm done talking about this one, we're moving on. Tape 3. St. Roche Quarantine File 3. St. Roche Hospital. Infectious Disease Ward. January 6th, 1998. Patient, Scott Griffin. Quarantine. We placed Mr. Griffin in the infectious disease ward, where we bound him to his bed. During the transport to the hospital, he ripped the skin from his forearm. I could literally see bone. I'm surprised how little he bled. Once we arrived at the hospital, I prescribed a series of powerful antihistamines and steroids. Unfortunately, it did very little to help Mr. Griffin's situation. Sheriff Lane wanted to question the patient, so we used the telephones as a makeshift intercom. I took notes of the conversation. Scott Griffin Interrogation 7.18 p.m. Why'd you kill your family there, Mr. Griffin? I didn't want to, but they made me? Who made you? The things in my skin, the rash, this damn itch. So you hurt your family because of the things on your skin? They just wouldn't stop itching unless I fed them. How did you know the blood would stop the itching? I just knew. It's like they told me without actually saying anything. The more they told me, the more my skin itched. It was a thousand times worse than anything I've ever felt. Every part of me felt like it was covered in ravenous ants, and it's not just my skin, my insides too, my brain, my heart, even the inside of my stomach felt like it was itchy. And to be honest, I don't remember hurting them. I didn't have a damn moment of clarity until I sat in that damn tub, and then I was me again, but better. The itching didn't stop. I felt better than I ever had, at least until I realized what I had done. I tried to slit my wrist, but my muscles tensed. They kept me from doing it, and I know why. My body is infested with whatever this is. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. We'll be talking again. You have a nice day now there. What do you think, Dr. Wells? Are you buying any of this? Because I'm having a hard time believing he committed murder because of some sort of allergic reaction. I can only say I've never seen anything like what's happening to his skin. And I think the best course of action would be to quarantine anyone he's been in contact with, examine them, and possibly alert the CDC. How fast can you test him and let me know if there's any truth to what he's saying? I can expedite the tests, but please, find those people. Agreed. <laughs> Unfortunately, we were too late. By the next morning, several new patients with symptoms similar to Mr. Griffin's were admitted. Three others were reported to the police for murdering and butchering their victims in the same fashion as Mr. Griffin. Update. Patient, Scott Griffin. Quarantine. This illness is obviously contagious. I made sure to take the proper precautions when gathering blood samples. For the newest patients, their open sores did not react in an unusual manner, but Mr. Griffin's sores sprayed a white mucus in my direction with alarming aim. The closer I got, the more intense the reaction. Mr. Griffin told me that he wouldn't live long if he didn't feed them. I think the patient is delusional from lack of fluid and nutrition, but it's also possible the reaction is impairing his thinking. Also. Getting the proper sample size for Mr. Griffin proved to be a challenge. His body seemed to struggle to produce enough fluids for a proper sample. I decided it was in the patient's best interest to keep him sedated and revisit this in the morning. My hope is that the reaction subsides, but I fear things may unfortunately be worse. Update. 
patient Scott Griffin, quarantine. As I feared, by morning, Mr. Griffin looked much different. Overnight, Mr. Griffin's entire body had swollen. He died at 10.14 a.m. When the hospital staff approached to resuscitate, he exploded, possibly further spreading the infection. To say that I've seen nothing like this is an understatement. Hell, I don't think anyone has. Evidently, this disease has the ability to severely manipulate cognition and emotion in human hosts. Not only that, but its ability to manipulate the host's physiology is seemingly unrivaled in modern day disease. Look, I usually gotta give humans a whole mess of drugs for them to rip off their own forearm meat and not bleed. So, something is special about this ocean cum rash. We also get our last nail in the coffin on the whole allergic reaction theory. Cause after a whole bunch of antihistamines and liver king juice, our boy is still a big old red tumor. Evidently, after the initial examination, they brought the sheriff in to question this guy, cause you know, he murdered his whole family just a little bit. From this interview, we learned that this disease can manipulate his thoughts and behavior completely. Not only that, but by listening to the pustule's murderous intent and bathing in the blood of others, one receives a euphoric bliss unlike any other available to mankind. Finally, I've been looking for a new drug! Not only can this disease control every facet of its host, it seems like the sores themselves are conscious, allowing them to target Dr. Wells in hopes of infecting him. The thing is, if this thing could projectile attack goo, why was he struggling to produce fluid for a sample? I think that this was the disease defending itself from discovery, or at least delaying it for as long as possible. In response to his condition, Wells gave him a bunch of Xanax or something to sedate him. So whenever you want a Xanax, just start oozing. Anyways, this didn't work because he fucking exploded, which did in fact make me giggle. Now that we know more about what we're dealing with, let's ask the questions that have gone unanswered. What in the hell was that aquatic critter with the infectious cum? This is why you wear condoms. They aren't just for babies. Remember, STDs are much worse. You can always get rid of a baby. It's likely that this creature expels some sort of substance unlike anything seen by modern medicine before. And chances are, this is something not even modern science has ever seen before. Whatever the white goo was, it contained an intelligent pathogen that's capable of spreading from person to person. As infections rise, the violent tendencies this disease tends to inspire will have more wide-reaching implications. And unfortunately, I believe this is only the beginning of what this disease can do. The only thing that can really let us know is if more tapes come to light. If you like this video and want to come back and check out the rest of this fantastic analog horror series, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled, or I'll make a white goo give you a disease. <clears throat> I want to thank Vintage8 for making this awesome analog horror series, as well as many others. He's a buddy of mine, and you should go check out all of his stuff. I'd like to thank Carrie McCool for voicing that sheriff. Shout out the inner circle. Love y'all. Hey, <laughs> everyone!